Hello, Holy Wiremind here. Welcome to the Temp Tutorial in the GLUA Pro series, where we're going to be taking a look at File.io, Curtime, and the Operating System Library, also known as OS Library. So let's start with the OS Library, where we're going to be taking a look at time, and that's going to give us a timestamp of the current time and date. To format that, you simply use OS Date, and our second argument is going to be time. Our first argument is going to be the formatting of that time stamp that we have right here. So we're going to get the hours such with this. You can get minutes like this, and you can get seconds like this. So we have percent %h, percent %m, and percent %s. As you can see, it's in military time. So that's going to be 8.46 p.m. because it's being run right here on the server, which is running my computer. If you run it on the uh, person's client, it will get their operating system time. So just to specify that. Now, so if you want the date really quick, all you do is put month and then you can put the day and then lastly you use uppercase Y for year and that will do that as such and also you don't have to put it in this form you can play around with it put it as you like Heck, you can put the year up here too that's good as well however you'd like to do it and likewise for hours minutes seconds so that's going to be formatting the time now what we can also do with the operating system library is we can do something called OS clock. Now this function is going to return the time Gmod has been open to the console. So let's put clock here as an indicator. And we have 138 seconds that this console has been open. Likewise, we have something called cur time. Cur time is going to return the uptime of the server. So here we go, we have cur time. And the uptime since the refresh of this server is one second to the execution of this command. So Lastly, we have something called diff time, and diff time is going to take input number one's time, which is going to be in seconds, and then input number two's time, which is also going to be in seconds, find the difference, and round it as such, so you can see that 172 minus 1 is going to give us 171, and that's very good. So that concludes everything for the operating system library. Now for file I.O., we have this one, this one command right here to check if a file actually exists. So we're going to check for a directory in this case, and that directory is going to be located in the data folder. So let's see if it exists, which it doesn't. Now, how do you get to this data folder? Well, start from your server, go to Gary's mod, and then go to data, and you'll have the, all your files right here that you're writing to if you're writing to data folder. So since we don't have an example directory, let's change that and create one. So if it does not exist, then we want to use file create directory and in this case we're going to be creating example and likewise we want to create another subdirectory well this is all you do forward slash and there you go now we have two directories that we have created and let's go in here as you can see example and here is soup which is the second directory okay so what about a file well let's start by setting some data for the file because you can't just have a file with no data, that's silly. And you know we have to sneak in soup is good. So we're gonna do that. So that's gonna be our data type number one. And also we're gonna be having a table as well for those who are curious. So we're going to have the key value one, we'll just uh, store this as 10, how about that? And key value two will be hello. And we, of course we can have multiple values as well, but we're just gonna keep it simple for now. And we'll get into the table variant at the end of the tutorial. So let's start simple with just the string variant. So first off, we're going to, for the string variant, see if the file exists. And we're going to have data.txt be our file. And you can name it whatever. It just uh, for the example, say data. And if it does not exist, we're going to write. Now, write and append and all these other things uh, delete as well can only be applied to the data folder. So that's why we're specifying the data folder for this tutorial example. All right, so let's start by checking, or actually writing this file. We already checked it, so now we're gonna to write to here, and then we're going to specify, actually we're, instead of data for the second argument, we're going to put sample data, which is gonna be our data we defined up here, and it must be in string format for this command. So when we save that, now we have data.txt, and we have soup is good as the contents, as defined right here, so that's how that works. So if the file does already exist, let's say we want to get some information about that file. Well, first we're going to use print command here, then we're going to have file dot, and we're going to have size, and that's going to give us the size of the given file. 
located in the given directory. Since we're not reading or deleting, or writing or deleting, we have to specify data as directory. As you can see, the file size is going to be 13. Now, what if we want to get the creation of the file or when that file was created? So you recall from the last example that we did, we have operating system date as a method of formatting. And we're going to format in a specific way. Uh, we'll just say we have date right here, month, and we'll have uppercase Y for year. It can be in any order that you like. And then we're going to have file.time. And this is going to give us a timestamp, just as os.time did, for the given file in the given directory. And there we go. Now we have the date in which the file was created. And of course, we can bring it down the time as well with hours, minutes, seconds too with this command, just as we did above. So that works too. So let's say then we want to pin some stuff to the end of the file, which is simply to tack on some more data to the end of the file. So let's say we want to tack on the string. Heck yeah, it is. And there we go. So we save and let's go to data.txt. And as you can see, heck yeah, it is twice because I'm a spaz with the save button. So now you know how great soup really is, hopefully. One day you will, one day, we can hope. All right, so let's go to print and let's check if the files that we made or directories we made are actually directories. So how we check that is we go is directory and let's say we want to check is the example directory a directory? Yes, it is. Now, what if we wanna check if the data.txt file we made is directory? Well, no, it's not. So there we have false. So that's how you do that. Then we have a very useful command here called file.find, which will take the given directory, search all the directories or subdirectories and subfiles of that directory, which is mentioned with this wildcard or asterisk. And we're going to specify the main directory, which is going to be data. And then we're going to assign those to local variables, which are going to be tables. So we're going to have files and then we're going to have folders as the uh, files and folders. We're going to be printing those as well so we can see exactly what we have. So there we go. Then we have folders. And as you can see, the files we have, according to here, is data.txt and the directories, it will be soup. Okay, so that should be that. Now let's do some more stuff with that as well. So let's say that we want to read what's in the contents of these files. So first I'm going to define the data file as being the first file that we found, and we can have the soup folder for those who are curious. Very simple as well, same procedure, just folders table, get the first key value, and that will give us the soup folder in this case. And then we're going to print out the contents of the data file. So we're going to say file read, then we're going to specify the directory, forward slash, and then concatenate data file. So remember that data file according to our console on the left hand side is going to be this. So this is exactly what's going on. So it's as if I'm concatenating these two values and we're getting the file path as such. So that's one trick you can do, which is something I want to emphasize in this tutorial as I threw some people off. And we're going to be looking in the data folder. Let's close out this print. And now we have the contents of data.txt, which we can confirm by doing that. If you want to pause the video and check, there you go. If not, let's move forward and I'll blame you if you don't either because that's a lot to check. So then we're going to be using another one called file open, which allows us to open the same file as a first argument. The second argument is going to be the mode in which we open the file. So we have read mode, we have write mode, we have append mode, we have read binary mode, we have write binary mode, and we have append binary as well or binary append mode, depending on how you want to call it, and our data directory there. I'm not going to go too much into detail about this as I wish to be timely with this tutorial, as I know it's going to extend over 10 minutes, but that's okay. So lastly, I want to show you how then to delete a file before we get into the table variant of this, which is not going to take too long. And we'll say we want to delete data.txt, which is by default going to go to the data directory so you don't have to specify it. And that's very important so you don't write some Lua, to delete your Lua files. And there you can see there is no more data.txt. We knew you so long, so well. You had a good life, data.txt. 
but now you're going to be created to new and better things, which is going to be using a table variant in this case. So as the code goes, data.txt does not exist at this point. So we're going to be creating new data.txt. So instead of directly putting in a table, you can't do that because this must be a string. So one method that you can use is called from the util library, table to key values. And then you're going to be inputting the table and that's going to convert it to string format. So once we actually read this data, we're going to likewise going to have to convert that back to a table. So I'm going to remove this. I'm going to say print table. And then we're going to actually, you know what? Let's click, let's keep this delete command. And I'll just put that here because we're going to have to delete the file anyway. So then we're going to have print table and the table we're going to be printing here. We're going to have to convert back from the key value format that we just read from this file. So to do that, it's going to be key values to table. It's a very lengthy command, I know. And the first argument is going to be the input here from the read right here. And then we're going to have another Boolean, which is going to be used as escape sequences, which we can set default to false. And then we're going to have preserve key case, which also set to false as well. And so let's print that out. And there you go. Now you can see that we have data. Here's key values. Oh, we have heck yeah it is. That's why there's an error with the uh, load from buffer missing file right here. So let's just get rid of this for the sake of the example. You know, we'll delete this file and then save it again. There we go. And there we go. All right, so now everything should be good. And there you go. So that's very good that we had the load from buffer just in case the error happens to you. You might have appended to your file like I did. But as you can see, we are reading 10 and hello just fine. So everything's good to go there. Now, if you want to use the JSON variant of this, so let's go back and allow this to be deleted again so we can do that as such. So what you do is instead of util table from key values, you'd use util table to JSON or just like that. And then you have the table that you're going to be inputting. And then we have a Boolean value for pretty print. Pretty print doesn't really matter, but I guess, sure, let's let's try pretty print and see what happens. And then lastly, on the receiving side of this, you're going to want JSON to table, right? So instead of key values to table, it's going to simply be JSON to table, and you're not going to need all these extra parameters as well. And there you go. As you can see, it printed 10 and hello, just the same. So let's go check what happened if we do not delete this file. And that is going to be the JSON value. Let's return delete right here, just so we can put the pretty up version to false. And then we'll remove this delete and go check that version out. As you can see now, it's it's not as pretty. So anyway, that's going to cover everything for the file IO, cur time, and OS library. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a lot from it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Like the content, feel free to like, subscribe, and share, bell. And I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Don't forget to check out Hexane Networks for affordable and high-performance server hosting. That's Hexane Networks, whose link is in the description below.